Okay, so we are talking about uh, resistive memory, resistive element, the memory store. We don't have to introduce it anymore in this conference. And the simplest abstract view of that uh, resistive element is as a resistor with one of two states. R1 is high resistance, R0 is low resistance. And readout is very easy. We apply a voltage. If it's in zero, we see low current. If it's in one, we see high current. Very simple and uh, useful uh, element. The great promise of that technology, resistive technologies, is that we can lay out those cells in very dense crossbar structure. Crossbar is just rows and columns where we only need to have terminals for rows and columns. We don't have to have terminals for each cell. And that gives us very good density and also low cost. But with that comes the curse that the isolation between cells is much uh, worse than what we are used to and it will be a challenge. Okay, so the principal issue we are dealing with is called the sneak path. What is a sneak path? We have a cell at a zero state, high resistance. We want to read it. But because we, coincidentally we have a path, some rectangle around it with only one cells, with only low resistance cells, what we see is that the measurement of the zero will look closer to one than to zero, and that's clearly not a good uh, thing because we will, will have errors. Here you see the physical view. Uh, and that's the issue that we want to deal with. And notice it's a very important uh, fact about that is that this is da data dependent. You can see here that that zero here was unlucky because other bits, notice those are other data bits in the array were one, the red ones, and created a sneak path that affected the reliability of the readout of that blue zero. However, on the right, we were more lucky with respect to that uh, blue zero because it didn't have a sneak path. So whether we have a sneak path and how many of those we have, it's a data dependent uh, issue and that will be a central part uh, of the solution and the work here. Okay, so the sneak path issue is uh, very important. There are two ways to know that uh, topic is important. One, you count how many papers people publish, and this is just a sample. I didn't list all, there are many more. And the second way to see is that uh, Nature publishes results about sneak path, and last year was indeed was one of those Nature papers about uh, sneak path issue and how to deal with it. So clearly this is an important issue because it's non-trivial. All the attempts to solve it uh, were still not uh, successful enough. And the main issue we, we realized is that each of those smart ideas in those papers work in isolation. There is no systematic uh, treatment of all the clever uh, solutions. For example, we have solutions at the device level, making a, this individual cell be better for sneak path. You have uh, ideas in the circuit level. You have ideas in the algorithmic, how to read and write better. And we have ideas in coding, how to encode the data. This, we did some work on that. But each one alone cannot, it appears that cannot solve the problem and we look for a more systematic uh, framework that will be able to harness all those together. So what is our objective in this work? Our objective is to come up with some theoretical framework that will capture all the interesting things about that crossbar and the sneak path. And our model for success is digital communication. There too, the great success of digital communication came within a very rich theoretical framework. So we hope to achieve the same uh, for, for a crossbar and sneak path. More concretely, what are, I'm going to show you today are three things. One, I'll first show a fundamental view of the parallel resistance problem. This is the thing that creates all the issues here. Then I'll show you how to do detection, how to detect optimally how to pick a zero or one given the readout that we measure. And finally, I'll show you some coding within that framework that improves the sneak path problem. Okay, so let's start with the fundamental problem. Here I even don't talk about the crossbar directly. Imagine that we have a resistor that we want to read. It's RI, it's the resistor. It's one of a discrete number of uh, hypotheses. Let's say two 
for simplicity, a binary cell that we want to read. But the problem is, in parallel to that, we have more Rs. We mark it by L, an, an, an integer number of paths with resistance R. And the problem that we face in our setup is that while R is known, L is not known. L is this data-dependent phenomenon that uh, we don't know when we read how many parallel paths we have. And in addition to that random L, we also have some noise that is added to the measurement. We assume here that it's a Gaussian uh, additive noise. So once we formulated the problems cleanly, we can come up with the optimal map detector, the maximum posterior probability detector. Uh, and to get that, we have to maximize some expression over all hypotheses, two hypotheses in the binary case. So that's uh, straightforward to get. But we note that in order for this to be able to do it, we need two things. One is the prior. What's the probability to see a zero and what's the probability to see a one in the array? That's easy. The more challenging part that will make us busy in this work is to come up with a, a precise distribution of that L. This discrete L has a distribution and we have to uh, calculate it from the array parameters. So that's the map detector. Now before I show you this in the realities of uh, resistive memories, I want to, you to appreciate that this is not an easy problem. It's much harder in particular than the communication uh, setup of interference because see, even if we space the hypothesis very uh, nicely, we have a big margin, it's enough to have only one sneak path in parallel when we lose most of the margin. And if we introduce just one more, you see that those two Gaussians are kissing each other and uh, the problem becomes uh, uh, difficult. And at some point, we reach some L max that beyond which we'll not be able to distinguish between the hypotheses. OK, so what happens in the real uh, resistive uh, environment? Instead of that R that we looked at it abstractly, now this R we notice that is our three resistors in, in series. Uh, which tells us that the L max that we can handle within that framework is three. We cannot hope to deal with more than four sneak paths because then the two hypotheses will uh, be on top of each other and it will not work. Uh, now, the first thing we had to do when we look, try to project it on the real world is we realized that that three resistors in series is not the only way a sneak path form. Actually, we can have other forms of uh, combinations of paths in parallel, uh, richer than th those two. And what we had to do now is to modify the calculation of that distrib distribution of the sneak paths to not just count how many sneak paths, but also to count the probability for sneak path of a particular type. Because that has a higher resistance than that one, so we have to tell that into the model. And indeed, we managed to do that. For L max equals three, that's the target. We don't want to go beyond because we cannot. Uh, that was the initial sneak path that we saw. We saw that we see that there are a few more uh, characterizations of sneak, sneak path. And nice, uh, luckily, we managed to get a closed form expression for the distribution, not just on the number of sneak paths, but also on the type. And now what we do, we plug in that expression in the map decoder, map detector that we saw before. And now we have an optimal detector for the more realistic setup of uh, different types of sneak paths. OK, now if you want a more uh, practical detector, maybe that map is too complicated because you need to evaluate the complex expression for a, a, a complex sum for the two hypotheses, then you may think that to do a threshold detector. Basically, by simple thresholding, you decide whether the readout is a zero or one. For that case, we also have an optimal detector. This time, it's an optimal threshold detector. And notice that here, too, we need to know the distribution. PL, there's no escape from that. In order to get the optimal readout, you need to know something about uh, the sneak pass distribution. Now, when we look at it uh, pictorially, sometimes, on, like on the left, the threshold detector, detector will work 
Well, we will find this optimal threshold point. On the left, we decide blue. On the right, we decide red. But in other cases, we see the distribution are intermixed. Threshold will not work. We will have to apply the map uh, which will give us uh, good results because the distribution are uh, relatively narrow. We can still distinguish between uh, the blue and red. Okay, now uh, for some of you, maybe the more experts, what I show here look like a very uh, hard uh, view of reality. Uh, because in reality, not all sneak paths uh, create uh, errors. So for that, we introduced into the, our model other measures from uh, other domains. For example, we know how to deal within our framework with uh, cell selectors. If you add a hardware mitigation of sneak paths with cell selectors, uh, we can add it to the model. And the way it's added to the model, we assume they fail with some probability. Maybe there is some yield issue that some of those selectors don't work. Just give us the PF, and we'll put it in the model. We'll get better performance and we'll be able to give the, the optimal uh, detector. And also cell nonlinearity is very easy to introduce. In that case, we'll be able to go beyond L max equals three. If the cells are better in terms of nonlinearity, we can deal with more. Again, it's all within the framework. These are some uh, performance results. I will not dwell on the x-axis we see the noise. Uh, standard deviation. Here we see the bear. Colors mean is the size of the array. We see as the arrays get bigger, bear goes up. And here the interesting part is that uh, until some noise level threshold performs the same as map, but from some uh, noise level uh, onward, uh, we will need the map to keep the bear lower. The threshold no longer works. OK, let's go get to the main course, course of this uh, talk. So far, I only told you how to deal with sneak paths. But because I'm a coding person, I also want to tell you how to reduce sneak path. Not just the best decision given sneak path. Let's do something to make the array less prone to sneak path. And now I'll show you how we do it uh, in this work. Again, it will be within the same framework. The standard way, or I would say trivial way, to deal with sneak path is called Q-shaping. What we do, we make the probability of a one cell smaller. We make fewer cells at the low resistance state. And that way, there are fewer sneak paths with the three ones. It's kind of a, a simple way to make uh, less sneak paths within the array. Uh, it's very easy to implement. Uh, but the problem is it's too weak. We have to pay a lot in uh, redundancy. Once we limit the distribution, not half-half, but something else, we get lower uh, capacity. What we do now is uh, tweak that idea. And instead of shaping the individual bits, we'll shape uh, two by two arrays. And this will give us a stronger uh, shaping. For example, we immediately, when we look at two by two arrays, immediately that matrix of two by two looks very bad to have, right? That's exactly how a sneak path looks like. So if we exclude that completely from the array, we make sure it does not appear, immediately we gain the something. Uh, we extended it to a more refined uh, design of that uh, distribution. We pick up distribution and we optimize P0, P1, and P2 to get the least number of uh, sneak paths for a given uh, storage rate. And what uh, the nice thing about uh, that scheme is that we can still handle it within the theoretical framework. So even though we are now are better off in terms of sneak path, we can still get the uh, map detector, how we do it. That's the, from previous work, that's the distribution of PL, the plain vanilla, without uh, anything. I didn't write it uh, explicitly, but this is just, these are just combinatorial functions, like a mess of combinatorial functions. For, to make it more pleasing, I didn't note it uh, explicitly. What we have now is something very similar. With the two by two code, with those P0, P1, P2 that we design, 
Now I have a slightly different uh, expression for PL, but still a precise uh, closed form expression where I plug in the parameters. And the nice thing is that from this expression, we can also see the effect of our uh, ideas. Basically, approximately, it's not uh, precise. The array moved from size m by n that we see here to size m over 2 by n over 2. Again, that's a, not a precise statement, uh, but approximately we made, found a way to make the array half in each dimension, and it's well known that a smaller array has fewer sneak paths. So we managed to do it using that uh, idea of coding. Let's see results. So each color here is a different rate, storage rate. It's less than one. So we have to lose something when we do coding in terms of storage space. But the interesting thing to look at is the difference between the solid and the dashed within each color. So that exactly the gain by coding. Coding reduced us from the dashed bare to the solid one. And notice that here we, it's a fair comparison. So both skin, both the trivial Q shaping that is the dashed uh, curves and the coded two by two solution have the same storage rate. So the cost is the same, but we get a much better uh, bit error rate with the new code. Okay, so let's conclude. Uh, the moral of the story and the take home message is that in order to solve sneak path in commercial product, we need collaboration. We need a menu of tools, non-linearity, cell selectors, some shaping, detectors. All of that will be needed to get a workable uh, device. And what we try to do here is to the first step, it's not the end, it's just the first step, to uh, make all of those ideas uh, jointly progress the technology. And there is a lot of uh, future research. Basically, the pr principal direction for the future is to make the, all those uh, results more realistic. Look at a real array, let's say a new press release from some company, see what they have there, and try to introduce that to the model. And then, that, then you, we can use the same constructs, the same anal analysis and uh, algorithms for the new technology such that uh, it it's made even better than what it can do alone. That's it, thank you very much. <laughs>